Welcome to the video, we're going to be looking at 100 tips for Unreal. No further introduction needed, I hope you guys enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe and let's get into the video. During the early game you can let a bot open the chest and then kill the bot afterwards to get some free nice early game loot. I mean that's if they don't give you the 1-2 touch afterwards though, watch out. I mean in this clip I didn't even need the loot, I'm too good. For some reason if you reload then mount up it takes double the time than if you mount up then reload. So as a result, believe it or not, you should try a lot to do that. You can use your vertical or horizontal movement ability to counteract heroic landing. Jumping whilst mounting makes less noise, but in addition to that, see big words, it also makes it easier for you to hear other people. The general rule of thumb is to stay away from automatic weapons, as they just underperform in comparison to all the other weapons in the game. Here's what I find to be the general rings for the force drop zones. Red being really hectic and green being more calm. And of course, black being, well, dead. Every single weapon in this game has a different switch speed time. So it's important to take this into consideration when choosing what weapons you want to have in your arsenal. For example, the slug rifle and sniper rifle are probably not a good combo to have as when you switch between them, you're left vulnerable for a fair amount of time. You can blink into a smoke bomb for some nice outplays. Although only the elite few do this, so if you're not part of the elite few, don't do this. You can also ram your mount into a smoke bomb if you're really into animal cruelty. I mean, I ain't condoning it yet, but like, you know, it's in the game, so like, I'm just turning you in it. These annoying little buggers appear out of the world and have 12k health and last for one minute, so... Have fun trying to kill this. It's a flipping sponge, but it drops a nice loot, so it's worth it in the end. If you do decide to fight them, make sure that you use one weapon and one weapon only and use none of your abilities because if you do decide to fight them, if you get ambushed, at least you can defend yourself off with those weapons that you have. In this game, the developers are low key be moving mad lazy, you know? So you can still see the shadow of the goblin when they are underground. Boom. Knowledge. So we know that goblins last for one minute. So by my deductive skills, if you see a goblin wandering around, it means that there's somebody within at least a one minute radius of that region you're welcome try to stick to main in one class as masteries are a key aspect of this game and can change the tide of any fight you can use the forges of boost to get to places where you would not otherwise be able to get to unless you have the vertical movement ability you can switch out abilities in general and the cooldown will not transfer switching out rarities of the same ability resets the cooldown When mount riding you have the ability to check around your players, so make sure that you're always constantly checking your surroundings. If you mount ride in one direction you build up momentum, so if you on mount you'll keep this momentum for a brief bit in which you can use the slingshot across a great distance. When you open the chest the potions will come to you, so there's no need to spam E on the potions or whatever. Get rid of beacons whilst nearby as they obstruct your view. This could be the difference between you seeing an enemy or not. Molotovs are not breaking against walls, they only break against floors, so use this to your advantage to line up a Molotov and bounce it off of a wall. You can blink through enemies, most people do not expect this, so you can get a free shot or two on them before they realise. You can reload whilst catapulting, but you can't armour or health pot up. You can dodge all forwards, backwards, leftwards, rightwards and even diagonally. You can use the ice wall as a boost to get to places where you otherwise would need the vertical movement ability to get to. When peeking, you should always try to peek from the left due to the gun being more shifted towards the right of your body. As a result, this means that it's more easier to peek out from the left than it is to peek out from the right. If you have a barrier, if you ever want to peek around the corner, you can put down the barrier and because it spreads out, it will spread out across the corner and then you can peek. That was really hard to explain, hopefully the visuals on the screen will give you an example of what I mean. Bow shots are silent at far range. You can shoot out hunter traps to stop them from exploding and doing damage. This is a quick way to get into the fungal jungle forge. Don't take every rune that you see. For example in this clip I found the mount speed rune. I decided not to take it even though it is a good rune as I needed a reload speed rune. Learn a handful of safe chest routes and then stick to them. This way you ensure some early loot and have a fighting chance if you run across an enemy. 
Look up at an angle whilst gliding across the sky to make you travel further. Armor is diminished whilst in the storm. If you are in desperate need, you can drop a totem or a turret in order to block shots. In order to get through windows quickly, you can jump onto the window pane and then vault through it by pressing space. Choose weapons based off of your environment. For example, over here, I was playing in the desert, so I decided to take two long range weapons since it's quite an open space. In your first forge, you should always forge a movement ability and weapon, but rune and armor pots are interchangeable. If you feel more confident in the game, you should definitely forge a rune, but if not, then you should forge armor pots. And if you aren't running the efficiency mastery, then you're going to have to forge an armor pot anyway. In my opinion, you should always prioritize chest drops over forges, unless you haven't made your first forge. Remember to make sure that you have 7 or less armor potions when picking up potions from the forge. This is because if you don't, if you have 8 or 9 and you pick them up, the rest of them will just disappear into oblivion. Pick up armor potions from loot with 6 or less armor potions in your inventory, as there's no way to tell how many armor potions are in the loot. Please note that this depends on how far you are into the game because people in the late game are likely to have more potions than people in the early game. When in the fight you can use crouch to dodge and evade bullets. This will make your hitbox smaller and in addition to this, it will make the enemy confused and throw off their aim. Blast arrow does not damage you but does do a slight knockback. Make sure to keep track of the order in which the enemies went down and kill the chickens in that order. When the enemy is at medium to far range, be sure to aim down sight as it makes you more accurate and zooms in the screen. Airdrops drop exclusive content such as the LMG and Barrier. When you're on the edge of a platform, make sure that you mount up but slightly move forward. So move forward, then mount up a bit and you use momentum to get off the edge whilst mounting up and that will save you time whilst you're on the ground for mounting. Please note that this works most effectively on flat surfaces so if there is a fence around the balcony or whatever, then it will be harder to do. If there's bulk of items, make sure to spam disenchant on the items before you pick them up. This way you're able to disenchant multiple items. This is useful because if you get to the max 200 cap, then you won't be able to disenchant anything else. You can pick up items whilst in stealth form, but you can't armor pot or health pot up. Do not go to the dead zones that I put on this map. You may be like, well, it's a free forge, but getting the mouth shards to forge is a pain in itself. The 50% healing rune and life still stack. This should be somewhat of a given, but do not go for loot goblins during the late game. When playing this game, make sure you play smart. Don't get caught out in the open. Make sure that you have a movement ability or an ability that obstructs the other person's use so that you can get out of that situation. Jumping backwards from a wall obstacle makes you go higher. In this game, jumping over an obstacle or near an obstacle makes you jump higher. So as a result, you're kind of essentially tricking the game into thinking that you're trying to jump over an obstacle. Switching out the same item with the same rarity does not reset the cooldown even if it's from an enemy. If you see a human bot and enemy fighting, be sure to team up with the bot to take down the human enemy, then kill the bot if possible afterwards. When third partying a fight, make sure you identify the weak and strong opponent and go after the strong opponent first. This way you have a higher chance of coming out of the fight a victor. And also if you find yourself in a situation where you down both of the enemies, make sure that you go after them first instead of looting up. This way you're able to secure kills more frequently. And in addition to this, we don't know how long chickens could be down. They could be down for as little as 5 seconds or 20 seconds depending on the runes and masteries they have. You can reload and open chests at the same time. When reloading and moving, your movement is slowed down. This is also the case when shooting and moving. Molotovs don't deal self-inflicted damage. The smoke at the top of the forge indicates whether someone's forging or not. The reload rune and sniper rifle is a disgusting combo. Like in most games, high ground is king. 
If you are playing with teammates, then make sure that you drop with them, as you are all able to open the chests because the chests are magical. You can hold W to go further in the catapult, and you can hold S to go less of a distance on the catapult. If a catapult is nearby, use it to beat the storm as it will get you much further than travelling on your mount. Everybody knows that you can blink forwards, but did you know that you can blink upwards? You can use this to duke out your opponents because nobody expects this to happen. Some weapons such as the heirloom and crossbow are actually automatic, although I do recommend that you tap fire with them. Don't use all of your armor pots early game as they're really hard to come by in this current iteration of the game. Once you armor pot or health pot up, you cannot cancel it midway through. So make sure that you're clearly out of combat before using your armor pots and health pots or else you will get killed or will be exposed for that duration. The map shows where the first circle will be, so you can choose your character based on the circle location. For example, right here I chose the assassin because I knew that that region had a lot of high ground which I could use to sniper for. Make sure to get rid of any excess loot that could be used to potentially kill you. This can be done by forging a health pot at the forge and then disenchanting the items. You can't use any healing abilities whilst in the storm, you can only armor and health pot up. I mean, I don't have any footage of this because... Um, I've learned from my mistakes, let's just say that. <laughs> when fighting in Rome Royale, make sure that you're always strafing. Never stand still. In the words of my friend, Sidestep that bitch! Sometimes it's just best, instead of reloading, to just switch to a sidearm to finish someone off. As a chicken, you still have the ability to jump through windows, so make sure that you use this to its full potential and juke enemies out. The slug rifle is a king during the early game. If you happen to get it out of your first couple chests, definitely engage a fight. As most people will be stuck on shitty weapons and you'll be able to capitalize on them getting an early kill. During the late game, make sure that you always prioritize potion chests as armor potions in this current iteration of the game are very scarce. This therefore will give you more of an advantage over people who might have less armor pots than you. Make sure to visit as many forges as possible and do not spend too long at a specific forge. If you have an armor regeneration rune, make sure that you try to let it regenerate armor naturally instead of using armor pots. Although if you're in trouble and feel like you need extra armor quick, definitely be sure to use the armor pots. Make sure that whenever you go to a forge, you always forge an armor pot. The exception of course being if you have 10. Make sure you use the third person camera to its full effect and use it to peek around walls so that they can't see you but you're able to see them. You can use realm tracker to track your stats and see how you're doing and you can use this information to improve on your game or just make you feel better about your stats overall, innit? Make sure to keep track of how much damage you've done to an enemy and use this to determine whether to engage a fight. For example, in this clip, I hit a sniper shot and the sniper shot was red, so I knew the person would be fairly weak, so I decided to engage. Jumping in Rome Real decreases your accuracy. Try to play the outer edges of the circle and try to stay away from the middle. If you're in the chicken form, if you stand still, then you are silent. Obviously, this makes you vulnerable, so you should get behind cover when you're doing this. Whilst in chicken form, you're able to enter the catapult. I personally do not have any footage of this, but the devs have confirmed that this is a thing. There should be no reason why you don't use your mount whilst outdoors all the time as this just allows you to move around quickly which as a result allows you to get things done quickly such as chasing your chicken now. Choose your abilities based off of your runes and masteries. For example here I had a healing totem with healing percentage increase of 50%. This is what I find to be the general hierarchy of the runes in the game. Although please note that this does depend on what class you're playing and what setup you're playing on the class. For example, if you're playing Assassin with a sniper, you're going to want Reload. Quick edit. Personally, I put the Reload rune back up to 6 since the new patch came out. Since switch times are longer, this means that you can reload your weapons quicker instead of having to switch. Bait out the other enemy's abilities and then go in for the kill. This way it makes killing them much easier and much more manageable.
In this game, enemies make a grunting sound whilst they're walking about, so you could use this to track them down and find out where they are. Crouch walking pretty much borderline makes you silent whilst walking. You have to have some like echolocation to be able to hear someone. Like literally, the person won't hear you. The slug rifle shotgun combo is a dirty combo, but unfortunately it's been nerfed because of me single-handedly. No one else, just me. So it's a bit slower now, but it's it's still worth it. You know, look off a couple heads here and there. Although I would like to point out that the slug revolver combo is actually kind of disgusting right now, and I think you should give it a go if you have the skills. If you don't have the skills, then, then that's too bad, isn't it? You can armor and health pot up whilst falling from great distances. This can save you a bit of time and potentially save your life. Now you may be wondering, how did I find this out? Well you see, I'm thinking of putting out a series where I push the game to its max. It's pretty much myth busting on Realm Real. Tell me how you guys feel about that. I personally think it's a good idea, but you know, I need the community feedback. Alright, well, thank you guys for watching the YouTube video and I hope you enjoyed it. This video right here was a bit more serious than what I plan to put out on my YouTube channel because I feel like this is more informative and will help more people, so I kept it more serious. Hope you guys can understand. You can expect more Realm Real and Paladins videos, but more jokey and less serious, unless it's a topic that I feel like needs to be covered in a serious fashion. Anyway, on that note, see you in the next video. Peace.